Hey everybody, welcome back to the Overwatch Project. Uh, this is a video presentation because of the, a lot of stuff I have to show you is visual. And it's about Captain Marvel, the MCU, mythology, and how all, all of these things connect. And the true paradox that I want to explore with you is how do we get anything good from these people from Hollywood who, are, when you listen to them talk off script, are clearly uh, and sometimes in some ways deranged. So... Um, Let's get into it, shall we? So my website is overwatchproject.com. If you're new new here or if just a reminder to check there, there's a lot of information on my website, including my latest podcast will be posted there. And um, just so many, a lot of source material for all those out there who are researching reality or want to know why we exist at all or what the meaning of life is. Hopefully some of the stuff I link to or books and other material I... Uh, show you here uh, can help you on your own personal investigation into this stuff uh, if you've been watching my stuff you know where I stand on this stuff anyway so before the end game movie comes out and this video could contain spoilers to any of the older MCU materials so just be forewarned I may mention things that you don't know if you haven't seen the movies or the TV shows first of all the scope and scale of the MCU is historical. I don't really think there's anything ever been done on this level before. You have movies, TV shows, TV shows on multiple different networks, including Netflix, Freeform, ABC Television, um, and a whole series of movies. All of this, all of these characters are existing within the same fictional universe. It's all based on Marvel Comics. And possibly until Captain Marvel, um, we have a warning sign here with Captain Marvel where the MCU is going to be going in the future, possibly. But in the scale of things, and just to give you an idea how much stuff we're talking about here. This is an gra older graphic from CNET where they basically map out the Marvel Cinematic Universe and when you pull back, and, and this covers, like, if you were going to watch them in order. So Captain America and the First Avenger isn't the first movie that came out, but in a timeline, it begins in World War II. And so you start watching there, the first two seasons of Agent Carter, then Iron Man, and then it breaks down into um, which television shows to watch and what episodes so after iron man 3 you would start with marvel's agents of shield season 1 episode 2 7 then the next movie it goes on and on into until you get to like the, the uh where you watch um the uh, netflix shows you have cloak and dagger the runaways um on freeform and hulu and um on and on and on, and, and, and it's continuing with unnamed future movies. Uh, Captain Marvel being the last one that was out in theaters, and Avengers Endgame coming up next. But when you pull back and you look at the scale of what these people have been able to do in the last 10 to 13 years, that is unprecedented. Okay, so you have to give them credit for that. Then you have to consider the fact that that a lot of these movies, and in the comics, when you when you read the comics from uh, if you grew up reading Marvel comics or DC comics, um, these classic uh, writers and artists, there are things in there, elements in the stories which are based, uh, which resonate or designed to resonate with people, especially if you uh, have a philosophical bent, you can pick up things that other people might miss. So a really good science fiction or comic book has a story that everybody should be able to read and relate to and yet also can contain deeper material, whether it's intentional or not, that when it's put into a story kind of plays out in a, on a mythological level. It, uh, it uh, follows the hero's journey and it, um, it resonates with people because on a deeper level, our subconscious knows a lot about these hidden truths about our world and when you see it in a good story it just kind of reflects the real world you're living in and the real world is 
really strange. I mean, if you really think about it with the uh, all the different uh, mysteries of our real world, uh, what really goes on in the afterlife, um, what about archons, the demiurge, UFOs, uh, mysterious things like Bigfoot, uh, other just all kinds of phenomena that we don't understand, um, supernatural events. They just aren't as blatant here as they are in the fictional science fiction worlds where you can deal with these things head on and uh, kind of explore in a little mental experiment, you know, what it would be like if our world was like this. And the MCU was able to take printed comics and convert them in such a way that um, it almost seems uh, surreal. It's, 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 uh, it really, they did a really amazing job. Then you look at the actors, producers, directors, and, and you listen to what they say off script or when they get into politics. And keep in mind, I'm not for any form of statism at all. I have shed that burst, that uh, uh, thing off of me. I don't play around with these dialectics. If somebody says uh, you must choose left or right, I choose my own direction, which is neither of the of theirs direction. Um, there's always a, a third or fourth choice to make. Uh, try not to always be pinned down between two choices, which is what they always want you to do. But these people are extreme statists. If you were to think of uh, libertarians or uh, even conservatives in America as being like light statists or a statism light, then these people are the road to tyranny, uh, to extreme statism. That's what they're for. They love uh, government. Uh, they promote things that promote big government and... Uh, they're for controlling people, uh, taking away rights, and at the same time, uh, as uh, one of the characters from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, I'm just going to paraphrase what he said, uh, I think Mac, uh, the guy who plays Mac on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. says something uh, in Agent Season 5 where they were fighting a bad guy who really didn't think he was a bad guy, as a lot of the Marvel villains are very nuanced and kind of deep. But he said something like, we're all heroes in our own story. And sometimes the bad guy doesn't think they're the bad guy. But these, all these people are like that, really. I think that they all think that a lot of things that they believe are good. Even though objectively and provably through history, when things that they are for in society are tried out, these things always end very badly, causing despair, poverty, and destruction. That's the road to socialism, the road to all these, any, any, any form of heavy statism goes there. And statism light is also stupid because it applies to people that think that you can control something like statism which is inherently a destructive force on humanity and eventually it would get out of your control and then freedom gets eroded. So the just want to compare the personal belief systems that these people at least profess to have when they're off script, when they're talking about their politics. Chris Evans comes to mind, right? Captain America. Um, some of the stuff he said lately. Brie Larson, everybody knows about a lot of the things she said and some of the racist things that she said against white people and white men in particular. Um, if you want a review of Captain Marvel itself, the one of the best ones I've seen is from Young Ripa59. I subscribe to his YouTube channel. I agree with just about everything this guy says. This guy is an extreme expert in the comic book universe and Marvel and uh, just all things related to that. And uh, he has far greater knowledge than I do even. And I'm just a fan 
uh, from reading comics when I was a kid and from watching the MCU involved over the last 10 years, waiting for Endgame. Uh, but he, I'll link to all these uh, all these tabs, well, at least probably all these tabs I have open here. I'll put them in the link description below so you can check out the information and these other people's videos for the for themselves but if the, if you're watching these people there the some of the things they claim um about what's good or bad fall in line with just about everybody else they just have an idea um that their way of doing things would lead to some kind of positive result and it historically it doesn't uh, and um you have to wonder what they're really all about right uh, the paradox because if you're watching a movie like Captain America and the Winter Soldier um, you have um, a story there that clearly reflects uh, overreach by uh, government spying uh, a lot of elements that were probably inspired by the Edward Snowden revelations and uh, it's all there in the movie Yet the director of the movie, Josh Whedon, and a lot of these actors, um, if they were in a real life situation like that, um, in real life, they are on Hydra's side. They're on the villain's side. Matter of fact, all these actors would probably be on Thanos' side. He's essentially an eco wacko uh, nutbag, and these people also believe uh, this delusional uh, thing, no matter how many times they predict things and it never happens or... Uh, all the bullshit involved with gl global climate change, global warming. Um, if you go to my website um, under uh, Skeptology, I link to various things that lead people astray mentally. One of them um, uh, to, to reveal, because the, the, problem is, the problem is that we have so many cognitive biases uh, this one here, the Dunning-Kruger effect, is just one of many. These things keep us in conflict, uh, and they only strike out uh, in humans when we're trying to deal with political, religious, or uh, things to do with society, right? It, it really is amazing to me. No one said it better than a link I uh, quote I put on my homepage which is permanently there from Carlos Castaneda, uh, something that Don Juan told him in the book, uh, that he quotes from in The Active Side of Infinity, which, um, we ha which says, uh, we have a predator that came from the depths of the cosmos and took over the rule of our lives. Human beings are its prisoners. The predator is our lord and master. It has rendered us docile, helpless. If we want to protest, it suppresses our protest. If we want to act independently, it, dem it demands that we don't do so. I have been beating around the bush all this time, insinuating to you that something is holding us prisoner. Indeed, we are held prisoner. This was an energetic fact for the sorcerers of ancient Mexico. They took us over because we are food for them. And they squeeze us mercilessly because we are their substance. Just as we rear chickens in chicken coops, the predators rear us in human coops, human arrows. Therefore, their food is always available to them. And Carlos uh, replies, no, no, no. Uh, this is absurd, Don Juan. What you are saying is something monstrous. It simply can't be true for, for sorcerers or for the average man or for anyone. Why not, Don Juan asks calmly. Why not? Because it infuriates you? You haven't heard all the claims yet. I want to appeal to your analytical mind. Think for a moment and tell me how you would explain the contradictions between the intelligence of man, the engineer, and the stupidity of his systems of belief. Now, I want to stop there and just point out something. Human beings can come together and make something like a, a airliner, a, a ship, a, a space probes, rockets, um, sophisticated technology, just this computer I'm recording this on. And yet we repeat and continuously are trapped in a mental prison when it comes to interacting socially in a, in a society. Repeating the same mistakes over and over again 
like in literally insane, uh, doing the same things that lead to tyranny, destruction, despair, poverty, uh, inequality, all while saying that this is the way to equality and freedom, which it never goes that way. Communism, socialism, um, crony capitalism, which is what we have, it, not true free market capitalism, but crony capitalism, all these things lead to human destruction over and over again always we're kept in conflict yet these actors who seemingly put together this incredible marvel cinematic universe uh they would personally in their real lives they seem to side politically with the at least most of them maybe not all of them some of them i don't hear from but other ones are more vocal like brie larson samuel L. jackson uh, you've see, you saw, I'm sure, the commercials they ran for Hillary in 2016, right? Um, that ridiculous, right? So the um, the amount of um, confusion between the stories they put out and their systems of belief are remarkable because, like I said, in Captain America and Winter Soldier, that story resonates. It's probably one of the best of the cinematic universe movies. Because it's super realistic. Everyone can relate to it. And it was taking place at a time where we were all coming to grips with the fact that everybody's being spied on. Nobody has any privacy anymore. So how does somebody like these people make that movie at the same time with the characters that are in the movie? They in real life are more alike the bad guys. And the bad guys in the movie think that they're doing the world a favor by you know hydra doesn't think that it's evil the vulture in the batman movie i mean um spider-man homecoming movie you can relate to that guy you can you understand his motivations and you understand why he was doing what he was doing even though he was the bad guy right so uh you know what what can we learn from this then you have captain marvel now, I'm not going to get into the whole Captain Marvel review game because it's been done a billion times here on YouTube. And like I said, this is one of the better ones. Just listen to what he has to say. The link will be in the description below. You can check out his review and his channel. It's really good stuff. But um, Captain Marvel. First, let me start by saying the website for Captain Marvel is brilliant. Literally a retro designed website. It looks like a 1995 website, right? So that is hilarious. I love it. The movie could have been great. Um, some of the other critics never mentioned this, but even the guy who invented the scroll characters was kind of appalled at what they did to the scrolls. Spoiler alert here, but really, these are supposed to be just pure bad villains that really don't have any redeeming qualities at all. That's the way they were in the comics. To change them into what they changed them to in this movie, clearly for political purposes, blatantly for their immigration politics, was a insult to the fans of the MCU, and it should never have happened. Uh, apart from that, you have Brie Larson, and this whole gaslighting, where it's like, oh, finally a female character, finally a female hero. Here's 800 movies on the Internet Movie Database along with female leads. Um, but even, I don't even know if this movie's listed on here. The other week I was watching the original The Day the Earth Stood Still movie from 1951. The, the remake of that movie was trash, but the original one, you can still watch it today. It's a brilliant movie, has a lot of deep stuff in it. And in reality, the hero of the movie from 1951 is a woman. She literally, because of her actions, saves the entire planet Earth. Um, I thought the movie was way ahead of its time, even when I saw it when I was little. Because uh, on Saturday mornings, they used to play sci-fi, creature, feature, double feature on UHF stations. <laughs> Back in the... Uh, uh, 70s and 80s uh, and um, 
when you watch some of these old movies, it's almost like they're gaslighting you because what do you mean? Like, forget about Wonder Woman. Forget about some of these, all, all the powerful and likable, charismatic characters they have in the MCU, like Black Widow, who should have had her own movie already. Uh, forget about all that. Uh, but you can go back in time. And what about Alien with Sigourney Weaver and all the other Alien sequels? What about all these other movies? I mean, Alien was one of my favorite of all time. Still is one of my favorite all time sci-fi movie. The original Alien from 1970. Was it 78? And when I saw it the first time, of course, back then it was super scary. I could watch it now. It's no big deal. But the... Uh, the, when I was young and I was watching this movie, and she was super realistic. Her Sigourney Weaver's character, um, you know, I mean, it's, it, the first movie, it just none of the other ones compare to that first one, right? So what are they talking about? They, some of the stuff they talk about isn't based on reality at all. Uh, the reality that we all like, seem to experience in this realm called Earth um so what did, what did they do here what were they trying to do uh they inserted feminist politics uh brie larson um and you can't you know you can't really just pick on her but i'll tell you why they do i think they do because of her lack of charisma see samuel L. jackson some of the stuff he says off script about and when he talks about politics the guy sounds like a lunatic. On screen, he's hilarious and charismatic and a great actor. And so when you're watching him, you kind of forget he's Samuel L. Jackson. You get drawn in or invested into this character that he's lying about who he is. Um, I mean, Nick Fury in MCU, he, he play, that's great. His, it's just wonderful. What they did to Nick Fury in Captain Marvel with the cat... That, that wasn't right. Okay. Just wasn't right. But the, um, the whole, um, the whole premise that you're given by these people are usually insane and out of whack with reality. And yet, through some kind of paradox, they're able to assemble movies that are the exact, the heroes in the movies are the exact opposite of who these people actually are. And that is mind-blowingly paradoxical to me because where does that come from? Now, you see, I think a lot of this stuff comes from the subconscious. I don't think that, like, for example, after 9-11 happened, there's a lot of videos on YouTube, or at least there were before they started censoring and purging everything. Uh, you know, you saw those videos where they show you all the 9-11 symbolism, whether it was in Back to the Future or all the movies, cartoons, that just kept popping up over and over again and they they want you to call that predictive programming or whatever but i have my own theory i don't think so i don't think there's a group of people in a room that are conspiring around some round table and we're going to put this in this cartoon and we're going to put that i don't think that's the way it works i think if you do research if you look at a lot of material on my website and you go into the links section and you check out um the Pear Project from Princeton and other other a lot of other source material here about how humans are able to predict um, disturbing events one to ten seconds before they happen. There's all kinds of scientific experiments to show you this is true. The the I think this is all coming from the subconscious. Our subconscious mind is a part of ourselves that is hidden from ourselves, so that we are as narrowly focused into this material reality which is an illusion as possible because we are like um you know prisoners here to a certain extent until you break the reincarnation cycle you are food for archons essentially and um as long as we're kept ignorant here um we have um the subconscious the subconscious generates images or talks to us in images and reveals truth to us from ourselves it's not a conspiracy it's a leak from our subconscious superheroes are modern day greek legends um 
this is an article, but I thought of this uh, before I read this article. I thought of it on my own. MCU, comic books in general, science fiction. These are our modern day mythologies. Mythology is fiction, but it's also based in reality. And it, it, if it's good. And it, it, anything that we have to conjure up from our imagination is going to get input from our subconscious. Our subconscious knows everything. It knows who we really are, even if we don't. It, it supersedes the ego. It doesn't necessarily think in a linear line So because it's beyond time. It's that part of ourselves that is fully plugged into the quantum, to the uh, spirit. And it is highly suppressed here. So we think we're our ego, or we think that we are the surface person that we are, but we're not. So when artists, writers, when people creating things out of imagination pull from the imagination, I think the subconscious is feeding us stuff. Even Captain Marvel, for as much as it blatantly, blatantly drew from um, its... Um, drew from its um, political operatives that were involved in making it, or people that had been propagandized and politicized, and uh, all this crap that they put in the movie. Even though this movie contained all that, it still contained an element that I don't think the writers even were aware of. And this is a bit of a spoiler, but in reality, you know, what, what was a core element of Captain Marvel that isn't a negative in the movie. It's it's actually a positive. The, this character was more powerful than she thought she was. Lied to about who she is. Given amnesia so she doesn't remember who she really is. And she was being used as a slave, essentially, by the Kree, who made her think that she was free when she wasn't. That is the story of humanity. We are more powerful than we think we are. We have been given amnesia every time we reincarnate so we don't remember who we are. We are slaves or food for archons, the spiritual beings that rule this realm or world that we're on. And we are kept here over and over again. And in some places like America led to believe that we're free when we're really not because we're kept under the thumb of statism in whatever form, wherever we go. We can't escape it. Where if you go to the extreme, you can be in like places like North Korea or uh, you can be in a place that at least affords you an illusion of freedom or some more freedoms than other places, at least for now. And while they're trying to globalize everything and create a global technocracy that'll, you know, suppress all of humankind. But they don't, they desperately don't want us to know that. That's why everything's confused. All these dogmatic religions and atheism out there, Hegelian dialectics, everything designed to give you false choices, whatever you do. Don't realize what you really are. The movie has that in it. Whether the writers knew that they were putting something like that in the movie or whether anybody else just didn't realize that there was a deep, deeper thing going on there. If you're only paying attention to the surface stuff, you miss all this stuff. The movie has an element in it that is very powerful, that is you could say it's an analogy or a metaphor or whatever to the state of the human condition. Even though they probably never intended to put it in the movie. Things like that are what I look for when I'm looking at science fiction. Beneath the gar garbage that comes from Hollywood and their politics. The subconscious doesn't give a crap about that. And artists that pull information from their subconscious to create imaginary works eventually give us a gem in a pile of dog shit 
even if it's if it's bad, right? Now, not I'm not saying Captain Marvel's that bad. We'll see what the happens to the MCU after this, but um, you know, just my thoughts on the whole MCU mythos, and um, I will link to all this stuff. So I'll link to the, her 1995 retro site, the MCU timelines. If you want to watch these movies and TV shows in order, CNN has a great list. The list of female leads. Female actresses in popularity. Somehow she's number two right now. That's amazing. The Marvel Cinematic Universe Fandom Wiki, where you can find a whole bunch of information. Wallpapers for the comics and the movie. Uh, the review from Young Rip of 59, which is awesome. Uh, recap from the red carpet from the uh, thing. I'm going to put this Dunning-Kruger effect. This is what you don't know. You don't know what you don't know. I'm really aware that I don't know a lot of things, but I do know what I do know. And it's very important to keep these cognitive biases in mind because they affect everything that we do. An article explaining how our modern day comics are basically like modern day versions of Greek mythology. Um, I'm going to put this in here because it's a great interview between uh, the Anarchist and Larkin Rose. Um, it is a great thing to try to listen to some of the stuff he has to say in this interview because he talks about the cognitive problems of trying to explain to people things because their belief systems, their cognitive biases get in the way. They got in my way when I was trying to filter through a lot of this stuff. For, for many years, I believed a lot of bullshit. Uh, my ego and other problems got in my way. This is a video I'm throwing in there just because it's an uh, astral projection video. I thought it was cool. I'm not putting this one in there because it talks about Linux and you're probably not interested in that. Uh, this is from Technical Intuition. It's about a, um, I'm going to link to it anyway. It's about a uh, remote viewing of a possibly a Atlantean relic somewhere in America. Possibly a chair that can convert a human into something more than human um and it's interesting because this is, we're talking about superheroes and superpowers here and this is uh, some something that may uh cause superpowers another remote viewing session from technical intuition where there's like something secret in antarctica um and uh i'm going to put in this mark passio uh podcast because he talks about the hegelian dialectic and um, atheism, which is the worst of all the religions, and I'll let him explain it to you. And of course, I'll link to my Overwatch project website, my homepage. So thanks for tuning in. I hope I made sense with all this stuff. And thanks for watching if you watched the whole thing. Appreciate it. So I'll uh, see you next time. Uh, remember to check out my BitChute channel and uh, my Minds page for... All kinds of other neat stuff. All right, take care. Talk to you guys later. And uh, good luck escaping the Matrix. Hopefully this will be your last time here. No more reincarnations here, right? <laughs> All right, bye-bye.